Hello and welcome to another video. Today we will be learning about a special right triangle, which will be helpful when we look at the unit circle in the next lesson. First, let's review some basic information back from geometry. So let's say we have a square. We do know some basic information about it. We know that all the angles are going to be right angles or 90 degrees. We also know that all the sides are congruent. So I know that these angles are 90, all of them, and I know that these sides are congruent. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to assign a value for one of the sides to be x, and then I know that all the sides have to be uh, the same measurement for x units. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw the diagonal on my square. When I do that, it's going to bisect the angles, this angle right here and this angle right here, cutting them exactly in half, giving me my first special right triangle. So this part did not change, still 90. This part used to be 90, it got bisected or cut in half. So each one of those is 45. So yes, the first triangle is going to be your 45, 45, 90 triangle. We already know two sides of it. We know that this side measures x units, and we know that this side measures x units. So that's what I'm going to do. So these two sides will always be congruent. So if they give you one of the measurements, you know the other one has to be the same. The only thing that we're missing is going to be our third side, which is our hypotenuse. But remember, every time you have two sides of a right triangle, you can find the third one by doing Pythagorean theorem. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Remember, your sides are your A and B. Your hypotenuse is always your C. So I know one of my sides is X, and then I'm going to square it. The other side is also X. I'm going to square it. And then I'm going to label that one as C, and then it's going to be squared. 1X squared plus another X squared will give me 2X squared equals C squared. I'm going to take the square root on both sides, leaving me C by itself on this side. On the left side, I'm going to be left with 2x quantity squared. Since you're multiplying these two things, you can separate them into two separate square roots, giving me square root of 2 times the square root of x squared. The square root of x squared will just be x. And then the square root of 2 is the square root of 2. So now I know that c is equal to x times the square root of 2, giving me my third side and my final ratio. So how can we apply these ratios to real uh, examples? So let's look at the first example. We know that we have a right triangle at the top. So this is 90 degrees, this is 45. So the third side must be 45. The placement in which you put them is important. So if you go back and look at this across from the 45, you're gonna have the X ratio on both sides and across from the hypotenuse, you're gonna have your X times the square root of two. So that's exactly what I'm going to put across from each of my 45s. I'm going to put the ratio x on both sides, and then across from the other one, it's going to be x times the square root of 2. I'm going to ignore this x because I'm looking for the third side, saying that it's x equal to, so do not get confused. So I know that x is equal to 3, and I know that the third side is x times the square root of 2. Like I said before, I know that x is equal to, the, to 3. So I'm going to replace that here and say 3 times the square root of 2 is going to be the measurement of my third side, and I'm done. Pretty easy process to do. Again, if you have a special red triangle, you can find any missing side by them by just getting one of the sides. So let's try a different one. So again, across from 45, I'm going to have x. 
across from the other 45, I'm going to have x as well, which is the side that they gave me. So I know that this side is equal to 3. So my other third side, my ratio is going to be x times square root of 2, like I said before. So if this is 3, remember these two are always congruent. So a is equal to 3. And then c is equal to 3 times the square root of 2. So those are going to be my two measurements that I was missing. Pretty simple process. The 45, 45, 90 is going to be the easy one because you only have two different measurements. Remember, the sides are always going to be congruent. The second special right triangle comes from a equiangular and equilateral triangle. So I'm going to do my best to draw one. So if you remember back from geometry, again, remember the angles are congruent. So all of them are equal to 60 degrees. You have three of them. They add up to 180. That's the only option that you have. If it's equilateral, it means that all the sides are also congruent. So I'm going to put a measurement of 2x on this one to differentiate between the one that we did before. And it will work out nicer. So again, I know all two sides are 2x. So the way that we are going to get our special right triangle is by bisecting the angle at the top right down the middle. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come down straight down, creating two right triangles. You can see one on the right side, then you can see one on the left side. They are going to be congruent because I cut it in half. Again, I'm just going to draw it on the side by itself. And then put in some of the information that we know. So I know this side is going to be 2x because it will be the same. So it's my hypotenuse in this case. I know that the bottom part used to be 2x, but it actually got cut in half. So half of 2x is going to be x. And then I have no known information about the other side. But like I said before, I have two sides of a right triangle. So I can find it using Pythagorean theorem. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to say x squared plus b squared equals 2x quantity squared. It is important to put the parentheses. If you don't, you're going to get the wrong answer. So x squared is just x squared. b squared is just b squared. 2x quantity squared. You have to square both, so it will be 4x squared. We're solving for b, so I'm going to subtract x squared from both sides. b squared equals 3x squared. Same thing that I did before. I'm going to take the square root. And to get b equals square root of... 3 times x squared. Again, I'm going to separate them into two separate radicals. Square root of x squared is just going to be x. And then my square root of 3 will still be there. So b is equal to x times the square root of 3. So I have my three ratios. I'm going to add the measurement of the angle so I know this is 60 degrees. It's down here, and then the one on the top used to be 60. I cut it in half, so now it's 30. So the second special right triangle is going to be at 30, 60, 90. Keep in mind that the measurements matter when you put the ratios. So across from the 30, you will always have x. Across from the 60, you will always have x times square root of 3. And across from your hypotenuse, you will always have 2x. Keep that in mind. So let's look at the first example. So we have a 30 degree angle here. Now we know that this has to be 60 degrees. Again, all three of them have to be added up to 180. I know that was 90, so 60 is my only option. So just so you remember your ratios across from the 30 is going to be your x. So that's what I'm going to put across from 30. On the left side, I'm going to put x. On your hypotenuse, 2x, 
and then on the other side x times the square root of 3. So on this one I know that 2x is equal to 16. I'm going to divide both sides by 2 and I'm going to get x equals 8. So I know this side is equal to 8 because it's equal to x. And then the third side is going to be 8 times the square root of 3, giving me all three sides now. Don't forget your 16, so that one's already there. Let's look at the last example. So again, across from 30, you are going to have x. Across from 60, x times the square root of 3. And across from your hypotenuse, you will have 2x. So now I know that x times the square root of 3 equals 9 times the square root of 3. I'm going to divide both sides by the square root of 3, giving me x equals to 9. So now I know that the one across from 30 is equal to 9. So I have two measurements now. And then the hypotenuse is 2 times x. x is equal to 9. So 2 times 9, which will be 18. And I have all three sides. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like the video and come back for more content. See you next time.